Well, um, the question I'm asked constantly is, is 3D television going to catch on? And um, it, didn't, it didn't work in the 50s, it didn't work in the 70s. But I do think there's a strong chance that it's third time lucky. And um, part, part of the reason of that is obviously that technology is so good. And um, there's evidence to prove that it will catch on. I and mean, we look at the, the film industry, the, the British film industry has been buoyed up by 3D this year in a, in a very difficult economic climate. And I think there's a willingness. I'm sure a lot of people would like to think they could watch those films in a, in a similar way at home, and so either, either through broadcasting channels or through Blu-ray DVD. I'm, I'm sure they'd like to have that similar experience at home. So, so I think it has got a, a big future. Um, my concern is there's a danger that we're going to disappoint with 3D because um, there's a very conservative attitude to it at the moment. I think we, we, we talked about it earlier, Phil, about not having enough negative in the picture. And I think quite often, um, I, I for one went to see Narnia last week, and, and I thought, well, why, why? It doesn't feel like 3D. It feels, it, it's very, it was all pr pretty much all positive parallax. It was very much inside the screen. Um, talk to most people and ask them what, they, what 3D is, and it's all about... Oh, it comes out into it comes out into the audience at you, and if it doesn't, there's a sort of a feeling that, that they're not getting real 3D. So I think we need to be a little bit less conservative. I think um, broadcasters need to perhaps relax the rule, rules a little, um, so that we can have that experience. Obviously, it needs to be good. We don't want to hurt people's eyes. It has to, you know, that 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 would be the death knell. Um, but that's Pardon my opinion. me to immediately defend Sky. The rules of Sky allow for up to two and a half percent negative parallax. People are just not exploiting the rule that already exists. So why, why, why do we think that is? I'm, uh, because I'm that's lost, really. because people have drunk in the conservative juice. It's a contemporary thing that's happening at the moment in this country. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, there were lots of unfinished <laughs> threads uh, there, that, um, and, I, and I, I really enjoy it when when um, panelists start debating amongst themselves. That's when things really get exciting. The way I want to do this little Q&A is we'll kick off with a question on a topic, but then I want the follow-up questions, if anyone's got a follow-up question, just to keep it on the same topic so we can just wrap up a topic and then move on to uh, the next one. If both questioners and, or, uh, and my panelists can keep their responses to sort of two or three sentences and not uh, monologues, that would be fantastic, and then we can have a nice speedy chit-chat here, yes. Microphone, please, and if you can just say who yeah. you are. Hi, my name is Jodie Nichols, and um, yeah, I've got a question for the panel, um, just about distribution. Um, obviously, we're here in the belief that 3D is going to catch on, but I mean, which broadcasters are actually putting infrastructures in place to allow people at home to actually watch 3D? I mean, Sky, we've been talking about Sky, everyone's... Is that the, is that the question? Yes. Yeah, Good, question. well let's have Caroline and Adam have a go at that. Well I think the BBC is currently sitting on the fence about it, aren't they? They're yeah. saying they're, they're, they're looking at, there's some bizarre term, looking at the technology of, um, I don't, they didn't even mention the word 3D, but they, they were sort of implying um, that they were going to look at that. I think, I know for a fact that the Natural History Unit have been sending people out looking at what projects could be shot in 3D, but there's no sign that they're going to... Other, any other channels aside from Sky? This ITV, we've got Virgin. So, ITV yeah. are very much adopting a very similar approach to BBC, which is wait and see. being cautious and waiting. Yeah. So I think some Virgin of have is, jumped in, I think. Adam. I think some of it, though, is how they get it out there. And at the moment, um, there are limited ways of actually broadcasting 3D channels unless you go onto the Sky platform. The, question is, about, the question is number of channels you, and the future but platforms, if you look not outside, the technology of it. If you look outside of what's happening just in the UK, there is an immense amount of interest. And there's a lot of channels that are launching or about to launch globally. So I think at the moment it's such a small industry really that you have to look outside of the UK. I've, I've read there's about 25. You know, you've got Legend or somewhere in Japan, you've got Discovery IMAX, Sony, Channel. Discovery yeah. Channel, yeah. you've got ESPN. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there is. I mean, there's, there are. You'll follow of, up in one second. There, yes, there are, you know, kind of like, you know, they're, they're stating that by next year there'll be 200 million 3D TVs out there, and it's kind of there is a tipping point coming. We're in regular discussion with broadcasters, commercial organisations, how they can get their content on the screen. It's content for these channels, which is really holding and everybody. It's chicken back. and egg at the moment. It is very well, much of it. The problem yeah. is the problem. Very, very quick, is, though, yeah, it's kind of it comes down to the kind of the artistry and the technique 
unique as well in terms of making that content good 3D. Now, if we rely on the, the kind of the manufacturers to come up with automated, you know, conversion techniques for putting 3D on there, you think Clash was bad. You see some of this stuff that you plug into mm. your oh. Blu-ray, you'll get horrible 3D in that. And then the fear is it yeah. could all come crashing down. Yes, but whilst, yeah. you know, artists such as yourselves and, you know, what we're all doing here is we're keeping that, that, that if, benchmark. If someone wants to pick up on that in a minute, let's just wrap up the distribution thing because this is now more of a content run distribution. Is, is the wildcard not necessarily distribution through, through broadcasters? I mean, pretty much any device now can connect to the internet. Well, Do you think that's so the way not, forward? I mean, sure gaming is going to be a huge yeah, we're heading live towards, events. We're heading, we're heading back to statement territory here now rather than question. Well, say, Obviously, there's 2012, a... For, uh, there is things coming next year. Now, I know it's 12 months away, but technology already being spoken about, which takes it away from the terrestrial and satellite means of distribution. Well, absolutely. An IPTV, Internet Protocol Television, is absolutely huge. It's always the big buzz at IBC and, and NAB. Uh, and the fact that a lot of television sets have now got a, a gig, uh, an Ethernet uh, adapter, you know, an Ethernet port, the fact that BT is now running fiber optic around the country, which will therefore be able to compete with Virgin, means that absolutely it's going to be highly possible that we're going to have IPTV download and play straight off the Internet. Of course, you will still currently have to buy a 3D telly for that. Any it's final comment content. on that it's topic? It's still about the content that you mm. cannot achieve 3D results by plugging into any box. And you know, Absolutely. The, the nature of mm. the illusion of 3D you know, negates that immediately and nothing will, will come up to create that. But build it and they will come. So I think what Adam's yeah. point is, the infrastructure is yeah. being built yeah. so that the content providers go, now it, I can present a business model to an investor to say, you give me X grand and it means I can go through all these various distribution chains and maybe make an honest buck. Next question. <laughs> Anyone got a question? Hand up for the mic. Okay, there's one over there. Um, I'm, I'm Brad Blackburn, a stereographer. Um, I spend a lot of my time, I found, uh, explaining to uh, directors and studio execs how they can use stereo to enhance the narrative. I don't actually see much creative use of stereo in most of the films, um, no matter what the budgets are. I just wondered, just picking up on some of the subtext, I think, of what people are talking about, going forward into the future to seeing stereo, the depth script, etc., to really be plussing and supporting and pushing the narrative. Can I pick up say? on that immediately and say I totally agree with you? You know, so many projects, you go and you try and get in there early, yeah, and some of the suggestions and the way of embracing the 3D are just kind of, well, yeah, not quite sure. And it's like, trust the medium, use it, you know, use it to, to add the emotion to, 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 to the piece, whatever it is. And 100% behind you on that. Let, let's, see, let's each of you have like, make, this is the last question, excellent question. Each of you just have one final comment and then we'll be handing it back to the chair. So Jules, go uh, for it. Yeah, let's pick up the same point I made earlier. I mean, 3D really needs to be something that at the very, very minimum you're looking uh, and embracing at storyboard level. Really and truly, it should be, it should be looked at at script level really, um, but then at storyboard level. And there's so many other factors. I mean, 3D, obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're using uh, two perspectives to create um, uh, the, the illusion of 3D. But inside of that, you have so many other sort of mono depth cues that you can use, you know, as we do in, in general life. Uh, Phil picked up on motion parallax earlier. We've got atmospherics, we've got scale, we've got lighting. You've got all sorts of other factors that you can use to create and enhance that illusion of depth other than just, you know, opening, closing, dialing up the volume on your I.O. Um, at the same time, it, you know, you should be using 3D to, uh, to enhance uh, the, you know, your, the emotional impact of your scene. And, and literally, you could be able to sort of weave your way through your script, plotting those points out. And so drink drink the 3D Kool-Aid, people, because yeah. there's not enough good 3D That's out there, Matt. That's five years' time. <coughs> That's what? Know, being a stereographer is more about... Not just shooting, it's about being the whole Absolutely. process. And I think and what we're already hearing five is years time we want more 3D there. in the films because at the moment they're looking like two and a bit Ds. Well, I, I think it's probably that point is what, what do we mean by 3D? Is 3D everything that's negative? I don't think it is. You know, 3D opens up a world that we're seeing through a screen, through that illusion, that we can feel you know, comfortable with in terms of the story, the character, the characterization. So really, and you know, going back to your kind of, it was played very kind of you 
know, sort of lack of depth by the creatives because it wasn't about the 3D, it was about the story, it was about the world of Narnia. And we're seeing that very much in, in terms of all the films that we're kind of working on, the two big features at the moment and others lined up. That's what it's all about. So we will see less, less depth, we will see less negative, but what we'll see is kind of much more characterisation, the isolation of characters to create feelings of loneliness within a kind of a stretch landscape. And, you know, we can do that in camera and we can do that in post as well. So. Maybe Maybe just add it. You're absolutely right. It's not about the 3D. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this is about storytelling. Yeah. The narrative is the most important thing. And the more prep that you put into your 3D, you know, the less incongruous it's going to be, the less, the less obvious your 3D is going to be, and it, the less chance it's going to pull you out of that narrative. I, I think, personally, by definition, you've only got so much 3D you can ever use behind a screen. You've got a whole bunch of real estate out here that you can use without it being a gimmick. Uh, my argument would be absolutely right. All of these levels, but I think ignore a little bit of negative parallax at your peril.